Chuck, I got another explainer. Okay. I was thinking the other day about compasses. Gotta love a compass, you know. They make great circles, and they got a great little stabby thing on the end. You can poke people in the butt when you're in the hallway at school. <laughs> you give them a little Stop. point, and then all day, like, ah! they make that noise. It's wonderful. I love compasses. <laughs> so you were carrying instruments of math destruction. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, no, no, that's not that compass I'm talking about. Oh, I'm talking about the kind that where you find your way. Oh, okay? okay. Okay. All right. And if that's what you did with your compass. I did. That's. That's, I know. damn, poke people in their ass? What, what? That's, like, that's why I did not become an astrophysicist. <laughs> <laughs> and you flunked like, geometry. That's right. He is a hazard <laughs> to the math department. <laughs> He's a math hazard. <laughs> okay. So we've known for a while that Earth has a magnetic field. Okay? Right. And there was lodestone, which is a naturally occurring variant of iron that is basically a magnet. And the people just experimenting with it, playing with it, would notice that it aligns without anybody touching it. We, we would ultimately perfect this into a compass. So there's a little needle with an N on it. And that little needle points north every time. A couple of facts just to consider, okay? In magnetism, opposites attract. Mm -hmm. Correct? And in love. <laughs> okay. Well, if opposites attract, and the north pole of the needle of my compass points north, that means Earth's south magnetic pole is north. Just mm, hang on for a second here. Yeah. Because that one might have hurt a little bit. <laughs> <If> the, <laughs> what do you mean? Like the North Pole and the South Pole. <laughs> if the North the Pole. <laughs> that hurts just a little bit. No, the thing is, if I have just a magnet with honest, a North and South Pole uh, and I bring a compass near I the magnet. Take a second here. So you're saying the needle itself is magnetized north. And it points north, which means right. so it's that, finding the south pole it of Earth. north. If you take it up to a, any a magnet, there's a north and a south pole, bring right. the compass near it, that north pole is gonna point to the, of the, of the needle is gonna point to the south pole it's of the magnet. It's gonna point to the south. Yes, because opposites attract. Right, absolutely, okay, I got you. That's going to point to it because that's what attracts it. That's okay, what attracts so it. Right. therefore, Earth's okay. south magnetic pole is in the north. I got you. And that still hurts. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, let's keep going. All right. Uh, the south magnetic pole, which is in the north. Which is in the north. Does not align with... Earth's geographic pole, where Santa Claus is. It does not align. They're not in the same place. Okay? Okay. Right. When I was growing up, the North Magnetic Pole, which contains the South Pole, right? So let's just still call it the North because it's easier. Uh, that pole right. was in Northern Canada. Okay. So if you were south of that pole, your compass would basically point north. But if you were north of that pole, between our magnetic pole and the geographic pole, your compass would point due south, geographically south. And if you were anywhere to the side, it would bend it inward. So good Boy Scout books would give the correction for where actual, because you don't, at the end, give a shit where the magnetic pole is. You care where Santa Claus is. Right. The geography is what you care about, not the magnetism. There's nothing for you at the North Magnetic Pole. They would give we, don't, we don't want Santa to be can uh, Canadian. <laughs> That's a disaster, you know. So you want a truck, eh? Is that what you want, a truck, eh? Mm. <laughs> So the only Canadian joke I know is when 
They're learning how to spell Canada. And well, we just, we think uh, C-N-D, that spells it. Uh, it's C-A? And N C A. That's how the A's got in the D A. That's how the A's got into the spelling of Canada. You hadn't heard that one. That's how they. That's how they end up spelling it. Yeah. All right. So they would give corrections. So if you knew what latitude you were on Earth, what longitude you were, and your latitude, you know how to correct the angle for it. All right. Right. So here's my point. The North Magnetic Pole is on a mission. It is moving. In fact, it moves a little less than a mile per week. Wow, that's a lot. Yes, <laughs> yes. 30 to 50 miles per year due north since my childhood. Okay? Wow. So I'm an old fart. So over the last 60 years, there it is. It started like in the in middle Canada somewhere, and it started going north. 50, 30 to 50 miles per month. Okay. So times a year, it's 500 miles a year. What is that? Did I do that right? 500 miles a year due north. Right now, it, it is passing the North Pole en route to Siberia. Holy crap. Yes. So... Your compass has never been more accurate before because it's by, it's coming along the left side of the North Pole. Uh, so it's close to the North Pole, North geographic North Pole, than, it, than it's ever been in like recorded history. Wow. Okay. And so it's going gonna, it's gonna to go all, all its way over to Siberia. And this is because Earth's core, which has iron in it, that's molten, the movement of that electrically conducting material such as iron right will induce a magnetic field that'll take over the whole planet that'll be manifest across the planet nice so but that is if it's the fact that things are moving means it's not perfectly coupled to the rest of the planet so the core can rotate at a slightly different rate than the whole planet does and it could sort of process back and it can do things and right now, what it's doing is it's, it's torquing its North Pole, which is really the South Pole, out of Canada by the North Pole, and it's en route to Sib making a beeline for Siberia. Now, did you say it's twerking its way? No, no of, I did not. Was that what I heard? That's so strange. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't blame anybody for trying to make a living, even a magnetic field. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, it's not. The word should be more familiar than it is, but it's torque. Okay. Yeah, the auto mechanics know the word torque, but no one else. And physicists, but nobody else does. A torquing is you, you grab onto something and set it to rotate or not. Uh, so it's, torquing is a force that instead of putting something into straight motion, Puts it into rotational motion. That's a torque. Okay. Okay. It's a cool word. T O R Q U E. Q -U -E. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is what's going on with the magnetic field. I just thought I'd update you on that. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Uh, and there's no requirement that the magnetic field exactly align with the geography. In well, fact, it, it makes sense that it wouldn't because, like you said, it's, you know, the, the core is spinning. Inside of, you know, this kind of liquid, you know. Right, exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, it, it's all, it's some all coupling. fluid. It's all fluid. It's fluid. So it is some coupling, but it's not tight coupling. So right, yeah. It's, so it's wandering. It's wandering. And so, so uh, by the way, planets that have solid cores don't have magnetic fields. Right. So the moon is solid all the way through, no magnetic field. Oh. We think Mars is solid all the way through. It's got hardly any barely any magnetic field. Yeah. So, but Earth we know has an active core. And by the way, there are stars in the universe, neutron stars, Ooh. that have magnetic fields that if the magnetic field is steeply angled to the rotation axis, that means when the thing rotates, it swings past your field of view, the North Pole, or whatever it's poles, it goes Phew. Like that. And in so doing, it can accelerate particles 
and give off radio waves. But these radio waves will pulse past your field of view. Ah, these dead guess. stars. So we call these stars pulsars. pulsars. Yes. Get out of here. That's so amazing. A pulsar is a magnetic neutron star with a magnetic field axis is tipped mm -hmm. so that as it rotates, it swings it past your field of view. So nothing is actually pulsing. Right. It's just, it's like a lighthouse effect. Right. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay. What a perfect and, way to lighthouse, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, when I was a kid, a pulsar was a watch. That's all we knew. But they got their word from us, just so you know. <laughs> we can, we got it first. We got there first, okay? <laughs> and we got there first with a whole lot of vocabulary. Like, antimatter, that's us first, okay? Oh, come on, that was Star Trek. You know no. you guys stole <laughs> that from Star Trek. You know <laughs> you stole that from Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and, and half the stuff that that they didn't steal, they made up and doesn't exist, like dilithium crystals. The entire dilithium crystal converter assembly is fused. No chance of repair. Right? Uh, yes, okay, exactly. Fine. Yeah. There's there's lithium, but there's no dilithium. There's no dilithium. And there's definitely right. no dilithium crystals. There's flux, and there's a capacitor, but there's no flux capacitor. <laughs> it's it's your kids, Marty. <laughs> it's your kids. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I, so and this magnetic field. Oh, by the way, there are times where the where our magnetic field has flipped. Okay, and right. the people read about this and they worry. When they say, oh, the axis is going to flip, they think it's like our physical axis. Right. And they're worried that that'll be the end of the world. But no, the magnetic axis, what will happen is the dynamo slows down, dies, dies, it, it fades. Then the magnetic field disappears. Right. And then it reappears, but flipped from what it was before. So in that future... Right. The actual magnetic North Pole will be in the north, and compasses will then all point south when that happens. Oh, by the way, you know something? That happens to the sun every 11 years. That's cool. Because the sun rotates well, once once a month. Right. Okay, that's pretty fast for something a million times larger than the Earth. And so it has a magnetic field. That magnetic field um, uh, slowly dissipates, goes away, comes back and resets itself, pointing the other direction. And all sunspots come in pairs, and the sunspot pair is a positive and negative of a magnetic field. So magnetism oh, is everywhere. It's very that's, cool. That is more than cool. I, when the sun, I never knew that. So the sun, and, and when the sun's magnetic field is getting weaker and weaker, and it's, before it flips, all the sunspots go away. Mm. It, it's pretty wild. So this magnetic it's, thing, it's its not just a, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an active force operating on this world and others. Excellent. Just thought I'd tell you. I love it. All right. This was a good uh, one. Okay. <laughs> this was a good one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you happen to still have one of those bar magnets, take a string with a thin thread, tie it exactly in the middle and just dangle it there. And it will align it. You don't. It doesn't have to be inside of a compass no. vessel. It'll just. It'll, it'll just find, find its it'll, way. Magnetic north. Right now, it's pretty close to Santa. Nice. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right, dude. This has been another explainer. This one on the compass. And what do, what do they call the thing below the compass that it spins on? Um, I'm gonna say uh, the the pad. The compass rose. The what? The Compass Rose. Uh, you never that, heard that? No, I never heard that. You never heard that? Because because every direction of the compass has a little arrow on it. Right. And it looks like a flower. And they call oh, it the Compass Rose. That's beautiful. Yeah. Compass That's a beautiful Rose. Thing. It, it sounds like a country music act. Oh. Really <laughs> Hi, y'all. We're Compass Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and one last thing before we call it quits. At Grand Central Terminal yes. in New York City. Yes. In the subway. Yep. On the floor. Okay. Is a compass rose. Oh, yeah, that's right. Now, there's no compass. No, there's nothing. There's no needle on it. But there's no, it, you know, there but there's is a the actual. There's yeah. And it's pointing the north that's real on the geography of the world. That's right. 
and so and that's in the subway. So it's just yeah. it's getting it's you inlaid, ready for inlaid the, into the floor. Inlaid into the floor. You yeah. Know? If, yeah. Last I last I checked, it was there. There's been a lot of subway construction. Well, yeah, they've they've, they've they've yeah they've redone everything there now. So who I, knows. I, yeah, 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 yeah. And and plus, you never know what the rats are going to do. Sometimes they no. decide to, they're just like, we're going to redecorate. We're sorry. We're tired of looking at this. And this paint was tasty. Let me <laughs> lick it off. No. <laughs> hey, look, I'm, I, you brought some pizza with you. I'll meet you at the Compass Rose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. For those who are, aren't getting it, there was a famous viral video oh. called The Pizza Rat. The pizza and rat. it was a rat trying to drag a slice of New York pizza <laughs> up the steps to exit the platform with this pizza. <laughs> oh, God, help me. All right. <laughs> uh, there's been another Star Talk explainer. Uh, this one on the Compass and the Compass Rose. With Chuck, always good to have you, man. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, bidding you to keep looking up. <laughs>